Hey y'all, I'm Mickey Gousset, and I want to welcome you to the first of a couple of dozen videos on migrating to GitHub. Now, the goal of this video is to introduce you to the series and discuss at a high level the different migration options available, as well as why and when you might want to use each option. But don't worry, future videos are going to go into much more detail on everything. First up, let's give you an overview of the series. Here's a list of all the videos I'm going to make. We will start off by looking at the easiest method of migration, doing a git clone mirror push. We'll then jump into migrating from GitHub Enterprise Cloud to Enterprise to Managed Users, which is where we'll spend probably half our time. After that, we'll see how to migrate from GitHub Enterprise Server to GitHub Enterprise Cloud or Enterprise Managed Users. Same with Bitbucket Server to GitHub. Azure DevOps to GitHub is next, including some of our Better Together story, integrating Azure boards and Azure pipelines. And we will wrap it all up by looking at some scripts created by myself and others to help fill in some of the gaps that the migration tools just don't quite handle right now. In this video series, we're going to look at a few different migration tools. First, we will look at performing a simple git clone mirror push. Now this is great if you need a fast migration, as it moves the git repo, including history and branches. However, all you move is git related stuff, so no GitHub metadata, such as issues or pull requests. Next, we will look at using the GitHub Enterprise Importer, or GEI. There are three different flavors of the GEI tool. One that migrates GitHub Enterprise Server, GitHub Enterprise Cloud to GitHub Enterprise Cloud or Enterprise Managed Users. One that migrates from Azure DevOps to GitHub Enterprise Cloud or Enterprise Managed Users. And one that migrates from Bitbucket Server to GitHub Enterprise Cloud or Enterprise Managed Users. Throughout the video series, we will dive into each of these tools in detail. And while discussing these tools, we will also discuss migration best practices and point out where you might run into trouble so that you can be aware of it and plan appropriately. There you go. That is everything I'm planning to cover in this migration series. Now by the end of it, you should have all the information you need to start practicing your own migrations. Think I'm missing something? Or do you have a suggestion for more content? Leave me a comment below this video and let me know. Also, Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and smash that bell so that you'll be notified when the next video in the series comes out. Thanks for watching.